and stay. Well, joining me now is Nabila Ramdani, a journalist and commentator on Arab world affairs. Nabila, thank you very much for joining me. If he insists on staying, even if he does eventually go, the United States isn't clear about who should replace him and how that will affect the region. Absolutely, and that's why the Obama administration has been sending very mixed messages since uh, the beginning of the demonstrations, uh, supporting uh, uh, both uh, horses, uh, as it were, both the Mubarak regime and the demonstrators, um, putting a little bit of pressure on Mubarak to begin with, saying that he probably should introduce some reforms, um, but, and then urging him not to use force against the demonstrators. But it, the uh, demand from uh, the Obama administration to see him leave now comes really late. And, and they are clearly worried about who's going to take over next. You know, we're seeing pictures that um, protesters are now heading towards the presidential palace. Would that have any influence on President Mubarak if, if they get there and they establish themselves as a force then? I think that's the first clear sign from the demonstrators that they are uh, literally uh, attacking uh, a, a symbol of power, the presidential palace. So far, they have been very peaceful, uh, uh, gathering uh, in unity on, on the main square in, in Cairo and other cities across the country. And now the fact that they are ready to attack uh, symbols of power is a, a clear sign of uh, the, the utter anger uh, of the uh, Egyptians. So what role will the army play at the moment? It's standing back. We know, obviously, or we suspect that there are obviously conversations between President Mubarak and the army as well as opposition leaders. What role does the army play and how long for? I think the army is going to play a, a key role here. Uh, again, its role has been ambivalent. They're now saying that they want to protect the people and they want to safeguard uh, security and order. But at the same time, they are clearly protecting the regime. Um, let's not forget that Mubarak surrounded himself in his cabinet with uh, loyal generals who are looking after him and uh, ensuring that uh, they, they are they effectively ruling the country until September. And uh, I think what we have to watch for is a split within the army between the, all, the high rank i.e. the old generation, uh, the people who are loyal to Mubarak, and the low rank, who are essentially young people who tend to sympathize with the grievances of uh, the young people demonstrating on the streets. Let's just talk about some of the opposition. The Muslim Brotherhood has been mentioned by many. We've heard a Hamid Barak comment on concerns over certain opposition groups coming into power. How would the opposition work? with the army if they're so closely allied to Mubarak at the moment? Well, that's why I don't think it's going to work, because the opposition groups have made it very clear that they first of all wanted President, they wanted to see President Mubarak leave, and they also had very strong demands as to how to move forwards, and that include uh, a lift of the state of emergency, which has been imposed since 1981, since Mubarak came to power, but also a change in the constitution, which will pave the way for uh, democratic uh, elections. And this is not happening at the moment. What role do you think now, just going back to the United States, does the international community play in this, these demonstrations, but also not so much the demonstrations, but in Mubarak's insistence in remaining in power? I think everybody's baffled at this stage. Uh, the, uh, both the Americans, but also Israel, and to a certain extent the EU, uh, have tried to urge President Mubarak to introduce uh, social, economic, and indeed political reforms uh, very, very quickly, so that they could make sure that he was still in place, but uh, appearing to make uh, concessions, uh, real concessions. He hasn't delivered on that front, and uh, it's. Uh, Sorry, it's, 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 uh, they, they don't know who is going to come next, and that's what's worrying them. So, uh, in a sense, can Mubarak be considered correct, or at least right in his intentions, to try to smooth the transition of power and delay a hasty transition? No, I don't think he's not, I don't think he's genuine at all in, in anything he says or does. Uh, people are clearly demanding a radical change. Uh, but for stability in the region to but, remain. But that's that the, an old despot should be worried about uh, stability in the region. It's, it's the height of, uh, of irony, to be honest. And uh, that's what any dictator would say, that they fear instability. But that's not good enough. 
of course there are uh, reasons to uh, be worried about what's coming next, but it shouldn't be a hindrance for people to uh, in, uh, enjoy democratic rights. Some fascinating insights there. Nabila Ramdani, thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure.